OpenAI just made two groundbreaking moves that are set to revolutionize the AI industry and cement its place as the leading AI powerhouse. Stay tuned to find out why I believe these game-changing decisions are shaping OpenAI's future. All right, so the first groundbreaking move came out on May 13th of 2024, and that was for their spring update when they mentioned they were introducing GPT-40 and making more capabilities available for free in ChatGPT. So there were a few reasons why I believe this was a great move. First, it was a day before Google announced their overall AI event. So it kind of helped eliminate the excitement for Google's AI solutions and really bring the attention back to open AI. So it makes sure that, hey, look, no matter what our competitors release, we're gonna always be a step ahead. The second thing that I believe this was super important was because it was it, they added a lot more capabilities to the free users, right? And if you are right now, the AI market is still in early innings. And what you want to do is reduce the barriers of entry for anybody that wants to try out these AI solutions. And obviously, Google, right, being the huge behemoth, I'm pretty sure everybody uses Google on a daily basis multiple times. ChatGPT or OpenAI has to find a way to combat that popularity of Google. And one of the best ways for them is to release their best model out there for free and adding so much capabilities for the free users and removing things. I think a few weeks ago, OpenAI also removed the need to sign in to use uh, to use GPT-4. So right now, OpenAI is eliminating all these boundaries from prices, from using weaker models to now free users even get the stronger models and being available without having to sign in. Nice. So OpenAI is definitely, definitely cementing its place as still the reigning holder of the AI market. I want to explain a little bit more of GPT 4.0 as well so everybody can get familiar with all the different examples and all the different cool things that you can do. But to me, the best thing about, maybe not the best thing, the thing that was most shown during the event was just how amazing this new audio version of GPT is to, is available to communicate with one another. I'm pretty sure you can watch live streams to see all the examples of these kind of engineers talking and discussing with GPT and even kind of interrupting it midway and having more human-like conversations with it. So to me, ChatGPT.40 is probably my favorite model so far and I've actually continued to use it and get my mind blown every time I try something new. So GPT 4.0 stands for, the O stands for Omni, which is a step forward to a more natural human computer interaction. So this is one that accepts input in any combination. And that's where the Omni comes from, either text, audio, image, and video, and can generate any combination as well in form of an alpha via text, audio, and image as well. And uh, the great thing is now the response of audio inputs and outputs take as little as 232 milliseconds with an average of 320 milliseconds, which is very similar to human response. And this is where you're getting very strong with uh, which this new version is this real-time conversation and real-time evaluation of what's happening. They do mention it matches GPT-4 that turbo in forms of performance on text in English and code with significant improvements in non-English language while also being way faster and much cheaper for those developers. They also mentioned that GPT-4 is especially better at vision and audio understanding compared to existing models. So they mentioned they have so many video capabilities that they showed during the live streams and others that they showed during their streams. But I want to mention that they have even better examples on their website that I think many people might have missed. Uh, so what I'm super excited about is more their understanding of image generation and also character consistency. And we're gonna take a closer look at some of these models. So here is uh, a user kind of asking, hey, can you create a model of a first person view of a robot typewriting the following journal entry? So here you can see that there is a huge, huge text. Um, and normally this, this amount of text, no matter what kind of AI image generator you're using, 
you're most likely not going to get all this text. And here in the output, you're getting it correctly. Then it mentions that, hey, look, you wrote, they wrote a second entry and they kind of added even more text. And we can see from the image themselves, again, it shows the new text. And then it, you can continue to write an input and it understands what it made previously. So the final input was, hey, look, the robot was unhappy with the writing. So he's going to rip up the sheet of paper. Here is the first person view. So here in the Alpa, right, you can, um, you can see that all the text is pretty much still in line even though the input did not include that so it's still looking and understanding what you did before and now it's implementing the new creation or it's creating the new version that you desired so i think this itself is insane and once we get access unfortunately we still don't have access to this type of of image creation but that's going to be rolling out i'll showcase in a bit um, but this in my opinion is going to be the biggest game changer of open ai the other thing is like character consistency this is a big big issue with image generation tools so here for example a person first created a character um, they wanted to create this character and they did this in one prompt they now saved the image and then they started a new prompt and they mentioned hey look this is Sally and they included the image of the prompt now after you kind of showcase this to chat GPT they gave another input to hey now make Sally about to deliver a letter Sally standing in front of a red door to a house holding a letter in her hand and we are looking at her from the side now you can see the character consistency here is very very high and in my opinion this is going to continue to drive this issue that we've had with image generation which is character consistency in general here we can see other examples of different types of objects or actions we want Sally to do and again we can continue to see this overall character consistency um, there might be some differences that maybe I'm not spotting right now but overall this in my opinion is my favorite thing about OpenAI's new capability um, we can continue to see here here they kind of have um, they're working on a movie and they have two images of maybe the actors they input both ca characters or both actors and then they kind to create a prompt to make some form of poster for that movie so here we can see their first generation and then they continue to make this prompt even better and better to get even a better image and a better uh, kind of poster for that movie so again i think the creativity here is insane and again we continue to see more character consistency here is a character design very similar to the male late um, male woman uh example where you first input a get a prompt to get a character you kind of copy that character you open up a new prompt and then you go and test out um, and, and tell gpt to create this new robot or this new character doing various various activities and actions and again you can continue to see that strong character consistency doing many 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 things so in image generation, I think that's super, super excited. Again, you can even do it with where it's even generating some form of handwritten illustration for a poem. So if you, your, your imagination is how far you can go with this new version of ChatGPT. And what gets me super excited is right now ChatGPT4 is the dumbest we're going to get and the future generations are going to be even better and better. Uh, so I, there's so many more examples. Here's one where you have two input images and you're asking ChatGPT to kind of unite both images to make kind of the engraving of, hey, look, this is OpenAI's logo, put it on top and put the text on the bottom. This is great if you are maybe your e-commerce store and want to kind of test out some form of product generations as well. Um, there's other ones where some crazy image generation where you're using image generation, but also have text uh, eligibility. Um, next, we have lecture summarizations. This is pretty insane. You can input a 45 minute video here. This is the example, a 45 minute video of a presentation and kind of ask for a detailed summary. And ChatGPT gives you an amazing detailed summary of what is happening happening i mean hopefully this is not all that was talked about in 45 minutes because if so that was pretty much a waste of time um, but overall we can continue to see multiple multiple 
use cases where you can make some amazing, amazing results with ChatGPT. So OpenAI, in my opinion, did amazing with ChatGPT4. Not only did they release it a few day, uh, a day before uh, Open, uh, Google released their IO event or their AI event, but they also showcased so many new products within there uh, and here with the examples that weren't even shown during their live stream. I think it's insane that they didn't showcase all these examples during the live streams because um, users would have gotten very excited. I mean, me initially, when I first watched the video, right, I was kind of like, eh, this is okay. But once I started to see more examples online, that's when things started to really click in that this version is amazing for users. Uh, so here we can see in forms of performance, in forms of text evaluations, GPT.40 is not much better than GPT4 Turbo. It is a bit of an improvement in certain things like math, for example, huge, huge improvements in human eval. Um, probably the best gains are coming in from things like this, like audio translation performance. And we can see that this continues to dominate in the overall space. Now, the final thing that I wanted to mention is the model availability, GPT4.0 is coming out to most users and I think most users should have it here if you go into your uh, openai or chatgpt.com you're able to select the 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 newest model which is here chat uh, gpt.40 the only other thing that they mention is that the text and image capabilities are starting to roll out today in GPT and they're going to continue to roll out. So maybe some users have it already. Maybe other users don't. At the moment, it doesn't seem like I have the capabilities, uh, but overall, I'm super excited to get this new image capabilities and I'll probably create a lot more videos in this channel. Now, the second big announcement that OpenAI made was this partnership with Reddit. And I think this was a necessity that OpenAI OpenAI had to do, and let me explain why. So on May 16th of 2024, they mentioned that they are bringing Reddit's content to ChatGPT and their products as well. And the main reason OpenAI is going to do this is, right, because this will bring real life, real time information to OpenAI to GPT-4, something that it was missing. So in line with this, Reddit and OpenAI today announced a partnership to benefit both the Reddit and OpenAI user communities in a number of ways. OpenAI will bring enhanced Reddit content to, GP, to chat GPT and new products, helping users discover and engage with the Reddit community. So obviously, it's going to be another avenue or another doorway for more users to get familiar with Reddit. So Reddit wins with that. Reddit's also probably going to get a lot of AI solutions out of this as well. But like I mentioned, the biggest winner here is OpenAI because to do so, OpenAI will access Reddit's data API, which provides real time structure and unique content from Reddit. This will enable OpenAI's AI tools to better understand and showcase Reddit content, especially on recent topics. And that is something that OpenAI, in my opinion, has been lagging, right? You have XAI, which is Grok, right? Uh, which is XAI Solutions. And one of the great things about Grok is that it has conversational AI for understanding the universe on real time, because it can look through all these tweets in their social platforms to understand what's happening around the world. You have meta platforms, or aka Facebook, with Llama 3. And and Meta obviously has Instagram, has threads, has Facebook. So again, very similar to Grok, they have all this information from users about real time data. You have Google, right, with their Gemini platform and Gemini, right, you have Google, which owns YouTube, which owns Google search engine. So you know what people are searching, what people are looking for, what people want to see on real time and all this information. So every other player outside of OpenAI had kind of some form of real time solution available for them. Now this is kind of, in my opinion, gonna cement OpenAI to be the leader in this space because not only do they have the most powerful model right now, they're now gonna also have that asset of real time data. So I hope you guys enjoyed this overall update of what's happening with OpenAI and why I personally believe that this was a huge, huge win with everything that was announced. And the ones that are really going to end up winning here are the users because we continue to get more and more 
models, better models, and better solutions at the end of the day. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care, have a good day, and see you all next time.